Well, good morning, friends. Today we're going to plant some Ferreo cabbage and we're going to grow them in five gallon buckets. We'll be right back after the break. <music> Well, good morning. This is going to be a, a video for folks that has a, a very limited space in their uh, in their yard and they want to grow some cabbage that can be done in a five gallon bucket, which is really not that hard to do. So that's good news for the, for the folks that have limited space. I'm using a Ferreo is the name of the uh, the, the um, cabbage that I'm using and I got these seeds from johnnyseed.com online. So if you want to get some for yourself, go check it out. But I've got the seeds, I got my seed uh, tray ready to go. So let me get these seeds in, um, in the tray and we'll get them over into the uh, seed starting rack so they can be germinating. And we'll watch the progression of this all the way to harvest. Let's get started. Okay, here's how I start all of my seeds. From I use a 10-20 starting tray and I like to use the ones with the drain holes because I start my seeds outdoors. So I don't uh, have a problem with the drainage of the uh, water seeping through and getting anything wet on the inside of my house or the inside of an indoor container, seed starting container, because I, I do all my seed starting outside. So I like to have the, the drain holes in mind because I want to keep my cuts. I want the water to fall completely through my cups and, um, and let me add water as needed instead of them standing in water for too long of a period of time, which rots my seeds. Okay, so that's, how, that's why I use the 1020 drain um, tray. Now I use my cups, my seed starting cups. I like to use the ones that have a, a you know at least a two to three inch deep uh, cell because I want to get a good root system through here before I try to push, pull that uh, little seedling out of there. Next thing I do is I add my seed starting mix and I make my own seed starting mix. So if you want to learn how to make this stuff at home, you can. Uh, we have a video on our channel that explains how to do that and demonstrates it pretty clear. Or you can, if you only have one or two trays to do, then just simply go buy some seed starting mix at your local nursery. Um, for me, I have many, many seed trays that I need to start, so it's more economical for me to make my own seed starting mix. Okay, so next thing I do is I use the mix. And I fill up my tray, my seeds, seed starting cells. Once I have it good and leveled off like this, then I come back through here and I mash in all of these seed cells. Mash them in good and tight. Use your fingers, push them down in there because this thing is just full of air. And if you have air inside these cells when you're trying to start your seeds, they're not gonna germinate. You know, you're just wasting your money and your time and very disappointing. So you want to keep these things good and tight when you get ready to start. So push them down good. And once I have them down packed in there pretty tight, the next thing I do is I pre-moisten. Some people pre-moisten their soil before they put it in, but I've always found it easier to do it like this. So you can do it either way you want. It's up to you. So now that I got it tight, I pre-moisten each cell by flooding it a little bit, okay. Let that soak down just for a few seconds. You see it just gobbles up that moisture, it's so dry. And once I got it where I don't see the water standing anymore, then I tamp down the tray. Now it's really good and tight and it's moist. I'm going to use some um, spinach seeds here for this demonstration simply because the seeds are nice and big and you can see them on the camera. Here's the seeds. Now what I like to do is I like to put two to three seeds in each cell. I'll let those seeds germinate and as the seedlings get up mature a little bit bigger where they're an inch or so tall, I'll come in with a pair of scissors and snip off 
you know, the weakest looking seedlings and keep the best one. So I thin it down to where I have one seedling for each tray. So let's start out by putting a couple seeds in each one of these cells. And I try to make sure that I get them kind of close to the middle of the cell because if you don't, they run out to the end, you know, to the edge of the cup. And I just don't like them to grow down the edge of the cup. Okay. After I get the, uh, the seeds in the cups, I'm going to come back and I add in some more soil and level that back off again to where you got right at about a quarter of an inch of um, soil on top of those seeds. And right now this looks like I got more than a quarter inch, but keep in mind, it's full of air. So once I get it in there, again, I mash it down a little bit. I hit it with a little bit of water. You'll see it sink down some more. So I'm, I'm getting to that quarter inch, that magic quarter inch mark I'm looking for of soil over the top of the seed. You don't have to add very much water that time. And again, I tamp it down. And the last thing I like to do is I always put a tag in my seed trays. I like to write on what that seed is, what that tray is, and what date that I planted it. Okay, then I stick it right into the corner here. All right, I got my cabbage in the uh, cabbage seeds in the tray. We're ready to get them in the seed starting rack and let them get going. All right, step one is complete. Got them in the rack and let them get growing. So we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll watch this as it progresses. We'll get them hardened off and get them, uh, you know, over there into the, uh, into the buckets. So we'll be back soon. Well, our Ferreo cabbage has been out in the seed starting rack here for two weeks and thought I'd give you an update see what kind of progress we've made with these little fellers. Just come on up here and take a closer look at it with me. Well, it looks like we've had a, a pretty good germination rate. They have they've have, uh, germinated and emerged. They're still, um, you know, full of the uh, coddling leaves though. I don't see any uh, true leaves yet. So they are trying, they're struggling. It's been pretty hot here for the last month, so that's tough on, um, you know, on your uh, cold crops. So what we're going to do is give these, um, you know, another week or two, try to keep them cool, keep the, keep the shade cloth on them, and see if we can't get these things to uh, get a little bit better traction to the point where we can get them hardened off and get them ready to plant. So let's keep our uh, eye on these little fellers, and we'll be back here in a couple weeks or so. Well, good morning. We've got some Ferreo cabbage that's been hardened off here. I'm gonna take uh, four of these and we're gonna put them in some five gallon buckets today like, like I promised to um, help y'all along that's learning how to grow these in a five gallon bucket. So let's um, check out the uh, bucket over here and let's, uh, let's walk through that procedure together. Okay, here's how we do this. We get you a food grade bucket that's good, you know, good enough to grow uh, food in. And you drill some holes in the bottom. I use five or six three quarter inch diameter holes, however many I can get in there, at least three quarter inch. And you don't have to worry about the soil um, weeping through the bottom. It's not gonna leak out. The peat in the uh, container mix is gonna clog them holes in a heartbeat. So don't worry about that. And what I'm using is um, my own container mix. I mix this up myself. So if you want to um, learn how to do this yourself at home, we've got a video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to do um, your own homemade container mix. So what I do is I take the mix. But, well, I, what I'll do is I'll get Nancy to put that link on the, uh, 
on the on our uh, video here so you can go check out that video but go check it out and make you up some mix and fill up the, the buckets all the way up to about two inches from the top with your container mix okay next thing I do is I'm gonna add a heavy dose of this bone meal. I like to use this because it's organic and it promotes uh, nitrogen and um, that nitrogen is what's gonna push your foliage growth and that's what I'm really wanting on this cabbage is lots of foliage. So I take a handful like this. That's about three tablespoons, but I use it, I just do it by hand and I drop it right in the bucket Bing Bing loves the way that blood meal smells. Put one handful in each bucket, and then I'll flood that bucket. Give it, give it a lot of water. You want it to stand in water. See? That's about right, right there. And that'll soak down through that bucket and all that peat and everything that's mixed in with that container mix. And that'll get that stuff good and moistened up for us. And it usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes for that to soak on down through. So let me go ahead and get these um, soaking and we'll be back in about 15 minutes and we'll take it to the next step. Okay, our buckets have soaked down fairly well. And uh, my next step is I'll take some of my container soil and I'll add it right on top of that. Okay. And I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna shove it right down in the middle of that. I'm gonna put me a good deep hole in there. And I usually go about to the middle of my palm down to the tip of my fingers. That's how I can tell I got it about right. At that point, I wanna take me another handful of the bone meal, I mean the blood meal, and add the blood meal right in there and get me a, get me a, a seedling. Pull it out carefully. Put it right in there and I collapse the sides, collapse the sides around it, then I pack it. Okay, and I'll get a little bit more container soil and add to it. Okay, and this one's ready to go over to the grow table. You want to see me do one more? Let's do one more for you. Okay, first I add some more soil. Okay, stick my hand right in the middle. Another handful of bone meal. I keep calling it bone meal. Blood meal, I'm sorry folks. I'm getting old, 67 years old. My memory ain't what it used to be. Put the blood meal in there because the blood meal promotes nitrogen. Then I pull out one of the seedlings. And of course the nitrogen promotes foliage growth, right? Collapse the sides, pack it in. Add some more soil. As needed. There we go. This leaf right here is kind of yellowed. I just take that right off of there. Now, this one's ready to go over there and get started. Okay, 
Let's head over to the grow table and get these up set out. Okay, I got them on through the uh, grow table and uh, notice how I've got these spaced out with plenty of room in between the buckets. I don't want to crowd these up, remember, because these cabbage plants will get, you know, pretty big. They start to cascade out and they get pretty high at full maturity. So you want to leave plenty of room in between them. And this is a, a good little grow rack to hold your um, bucket so it's got these rails on here so when the wind comes along and this cabbage is getting pretty big it gets top heavy and you get a thunderstorm come along it could topple the bucket so this is uh this rail is a, a good way to prevent that and if you want to build one of these little grow tables for yourself nancy will put a, um a little link to the uh video that we've got on how to build a, a five gallon bucket grow table so you can build one of these for yourself so let me get the water and let's let's lightly water these in. Remember, I soaked the whole bottom of the bucket um, prior to planting the, uh, the the seedlings. So the only thing that's dry is on the top. So now that the seedlings in there, I'm going to lightly water it in and keep my eye on it. Let me grab some water. Let's see. I throttled that. I've got this water here full blast. I'll throttle that water down real light, see? Lightly. And then I can uh, go right around that seedling. Notice how I don't do it directly on top of the seedling, how I go around the sides of it. I surround it. And that should be plenty. Okay. Our four little buckets of uh, Foreo cabbage are on the rack and ready to go. So we'll be back in the days ahead and watch the development of these cabbages all the way up until it's time to harvest. So we'll be back in a few weeks and watch the progress together. See you soon. Well, our Foreo cabbage in the five gallon buckets are really enjoying this cooler weather that's finally hit us down here. They're uh, starting to flush out now and um, uh, putting on some good growth. I'm looking forward to seeing some really rapid growth in the next few weeks. So they've gotten past that stage where, you know, you, you're, you worry about them a little bit, but they're, uh, they're off and running now and uh, we'll keep them cool and keep them, keep the soil moist, not saturated, moist. And uh, these things should do very well. So we'll be back in the days ahead and take another peek at them and see how they're maturing. See you soon. Well, our Foreo cabbage is ready to harvest. So this uh, is a, a good way to grow your cabbage. If you don't have very much room in your yard, you can grow these very easily in a five gallon bucket. So I, I did the old squeeze test. I checked the heads and they're good and firm. So I, I know that they're ready. So let's go ahead and um, harvest these because Nancy's going to cook these with some brats. I just love them like that, don't y'all? But anyway, we got enough for like four meals, three or four meals here of cabbage. So what I do is I check the um, heads, I squeeze them. If they feel firm, you know, then I know they're ready to, to harvest. And the way I do it is I just peel back the, the big broad leaves and I get right under with a long knife and I cut it right off. No, no science to this, pretty easy. So let's get some of these up and get ready to eat. <laughs> Gorgeous. How you like that, baby? Oh, wow. It looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to this. There's one. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Bing Bing. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Pretty little Ferreo cabbage. Mm -hmm. There you go. Beautiful. How you like that, babe? Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. Well, there we go. We got us a nice little uh, little harvest this morning, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't wait to put put this a fork in this tonight. So, oh yeah, yum yum. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed that little journey on uh, growing these Ferreo cabbage in five gallon buckets. And if you have a, a little smaller area on your patio, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. So until me and Nancy and Bing Bing, see you next time. Always remember, by I his hands, we are, are fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our daily bread. bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.